Welcome to another devlog for the indie game I'm making with the Godot game engine. The goal for this week is to create a system for the player to respawn after being killed by enemy tanks. For this devlog, I'll be going back to the classic devlog style of having a feature to implement and then documenting the work throughout the week. I think this will help keep me accountable to make consistent, steady progress on my game while allowing you to see a more realistic view of what it's like to try to finish a first game. I found that it takes a lot more time to create a video to recap the week's work of what I've done after I've done it. So hopefully, switching back to this format will allow me to spend less time on creating videos and spend more time getting better at game development, which is actually the mountain that I want to focus on right now. But anyway, as I said, the feature that I want to work on is the respawn system for the player. In the last devlog, I shared how I added a command post for the player to defend. If the command post is destroyed, the game is over. Another way for the game to be over is if the player runs out of lives. The number of lives left should be represented by tank icons down here. Each time a player dies, the number of icons should go down by one, and the new player tank spawns on the side of the command post. So with all that said, I'll get started. So after a couple hours, I have it working. You set the number of player lives as an export variable here on the map scene. And then that gets represented by these icons here on the lower left. And so for example, if you set it this to five, when you run the scene, you'll get five icons here. And when the player takes a hit and is killed, the number of icons goes down by one. And the way that works is it's just a bunch of uh, horizontal box containers. And the nice thing about H box containers is they take care of the horizontal spacing for you. So I have a, a life container, H box container underneath a parent H box container that has a margin on the left and the right. And this life container has the label for lives, which shows the text lives. And then another H box container that has these texture rectangles, which contain a little eight by eight tank sprite that I made that doesn't look very good, but I'm working on it. But the nice thing is you can add as many as you want and they'll just show up in a nice horizontal line. Next, I have the controller, uh, just a control node as a spacer and then it pushes the map scene uh, label all the way to the right. So you can change this to something like, and then the control node gets smaller to accommodate the lar longer map name. The other thing I added is when the game is over, because the player's base gets destroyed, the player's tank no longer takes input. And then also the sounds of battle the sounds of explosions, reloading, firing, all of that gets muted. And the way that works is when the map scene gets the game over signal, it calls this set game over function. And what it does is it finds all the tanks underneath it and then calls this set game over function on each tank. That set game over function is this function and if the tank is a player because it's in the players group then the set process on handled input is set to false and this game over variable is set to true and this game over variable is what gets checked before uh, any sound gets played all right the next task is respawning if the player still has lives left after dying then he should respawn on the side of the command post with a few seconds of invulnerability. So I'll get started on that. Okay, joining you back Wednesday morning with a progress update and here's what I have. When the player, this blue tank is killed, a new one, a new player tank is respawned from the side of the command post. And when it's killed again, a new one emerges again. And when the player runs out of lives, the game is over. So I was able to get the effect of the tank emerging from inside the command post. And that was actually easier than I expected. The key there is to raise the Z index of the command post. So when the tank is spawned, it spawns underneath the command post tile. 
and it looks like it's coming from inside it. Another key callout is that I reused the enter state that the enemy tanks used to enter the battle. So as a quick recap, my tanks use a state machine to control their behavior. A state machine is made up of multiple states. Each state corresponds to a specific behavior, and only one of which can be active at any time. If you need a deep dive into how state machines work, I highly recommend this GD Quest tutorial that I linked under the like button below. But one of these behaviors is the enter state, and the way it works is pretty simple. When the tank enters the enter state, it gets a target tile, which is the tile that it needs to get to in order to enter the battle. So in the context of spawning under the command post, it's this tile right here in front of it. Then it gets collision mask bit and a collision layer bit to disable. The reason for this is so that it doesn't collide with the collision object of the command post. Then in every physics process, it checks if the current tile that it's at is the target tile, and then if it is, then transition to the next state. So in this case, it's the player input state, so that the player can control it. When it transitions to this state, this exit function will be called, which re-enables the collision mask and collision layer bit that was disabled. If the current tile is not the target tile, then continue moving towards the target tile. And it works. When the player is killed, a new tank is spawned underneath the command post and it automatically moves towards the target tile. When it reaches the target tile, control is handed back to the player and the player can collide with the command post once again. So the next step here is to play a sound when the player is spawning and also to make the tank sprite flash to indicate to the player that he's invulnerable while respawning. So here's what I have. When the player is killed, a sound is played and the new tank flashes white. The sound I got from Kenny. If you're a beginner game developer like I am, you've probably heard of Kenny.nl. If not, you should check them out. They have a lot of high quality free assets that you can use. Flashing white, on the other hand, is a shader that I wrote. The way it works is I set an outline color, which is the color of the outline pixels of the tank, and then an uh, invulnerability color, which is white. And then this fragment function gets called on every pixel of the sprite. The first thing it does is it gets the current pixel color and then compares that pixel color with the outline color via an epsilon. If they're equal, then that pixel is set to the invulnerability color, white. If they're not equal, then that pixel is set to its current color. Then I added an active uniform variable, which is what this new animation player toggles on and off to generate the effect. All right, it's Friday evening now. I started these recordings last Saturday, so that's a week of indie game development for me. My habit tracker says I worked nine hours on this game over that time period. That's actually lower than normal because I was pretty busy at work this week. That's my bad excuse. But anyway, I think I have all the components to make a first level prototype now. So that's what I'm going to do next. We'll see if this thing that I've been spending hours and hours on this year is actually fun. That'll be in the next devlog. But thank you so much for watching this one. Goodbye. <laughs>